Brandon, I guess we've talked about this and you mentioned for weeks you thought this was a possibility and then a guarantee and now it's actually formalized and you guys are in the tournament. What's the original reaction and, and what do you think about the draw? Um, obviously really excited for our players um, to be able to, to be in a room with them and, and hear their name called and um, so many of them have, have dreamt about, you know, moments like this. Um, you know, Julie's the only one I think that's participated in the NCAA tournament. So to, to be part of that and, and their reaction, um, you know, those are memories that, that just can't be recreated. What do you, I guess, you presumably thought this was possible for this program for so long, but what does it mean now to have built this momentum enough where this is a tangible thing? Well, I think, um, you know, through experiences like this and, and um, competing in the tournament um, goes a long way just beyond um, this particular uh, tournament. I think, um, you know, there can be an increased hunger uh, to uh, become a program that um, hopefully is a mainstay in the tournament. I think it uh, can drive a lot of motivation going into off season. Um, I think it helps in recruiting. Um, I think it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a big step forward uh, in Kansas women's basketball. What's the reaction to having an eight seed even after uh, the weekend and the way that the season finished? You know, I didn't uh, really know we were an eight seed until I heard you ask KB. I didn't pay attention. Uh, I was just looking at the matchup. I felt like we would be an eight nine. Um, and uh, I felt like, you know, whether it was, I thought Georgia Tech was, it was a real possibility as kind of the bracket unfolded, um, especially once it came down to uh, the, the Wichita region or, or uh, Spokane. So, um, you know, I, I think of our nine losses, um, eight or two, four seeds or better. Um, and the other, only other loss was to, to K-State uh, at on the road, who's also in the tournament. So um, I think, uh, you know, our young women were, were deserving of that seed. First two rounds in Stanford, next two rounds, if you get there, Spokane, you know, what's it going to be like to being so far from home to, to go on this journey? Oh, we're just going the other direction, opposite of West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's uh, – in, in these situations, um, you know, you're getting on a plus, you bus, you're getting on a plane, uh, then you're spending time in the hotel meeting room, your hotel room, or a practice court somewhere. So I don't really think it, it matters. Um, you know, would it be more convenient to be closer for family and friends and things like that? Yes, but, um, you know, those aren't the things that the coaches or the players um, – are worrying about you know we're we're getting ready to uh, play a very good Georgia Tech team. Will it be special at all? You think to be in that building to look at that banner from last year hanging in the rafters there and, and see what that might mean? I mean, I think there's as as a coach, um, I think there's a lot of coaches who would really love the opportunity to coach in Allen Fieldhouse. Um, I know as a as a basketball junkie um, and the respect that I have for for Coach Vanderveer and, and that program, um, the opportunity to compete in that facility is, is, is special. Um, yeah, you mentioned recruiting. Are, are there any ways you've already seen this season help you in that respect? You know, I think um, that, that probably remains to be seen here uh, with, with the spring recruiting. Um, you know, we're feel like we're on some really good players uh, with some opportunities to add a another uh, piece or two to our roster um, during the spring period. But, um, you know, uh, we're in a contact period right now where we've done a lot of recruiting here while also trying to prepare for the postseason. But um, our complete and total focus now will be on on uh, Georgia Tech and the NCAA tournament. I know it's fresh, but how much do you know about them, know about, you know, with, with Nell coaching? She's obviously been around a long time. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, she and I have known each other for a long time. and and. Um, their, their roster is, uh, I think, four of their five starters are international players. Uh, six of, five of their eight, uh, top eight are international players. Um, 
So there's some similarities. Uh, they're a very balanced team, I think, much like ours. Um, it's uh, they're good uh, and, and they're big and and they have a local player uh, in Lily Love who played at Olathe North, uh, who obviously we're familiar with. So, um, you know, I'm anxious to to dive in and and uh, see a lot more film, but I, I I know just enough to make a few comments on them at this point. With so many international players on that team, and then obviously so many on your team as well, does that say anything about the, the quality of the international game or just the way that even you guys have, have gone overseas to find players and what that means to be building a successful program? I, I think that uh, it probably means that Kansas and Georgia Tech have committed to recruiting internationally. Um, but I also think that, uh, you know, there's some some very talented players um, you know, in, in the Midwest, um, you know, all across the U.S., but but obviously, um, you know, at many, many countries around the world. Growing up, Love being from KCK, you mentioned you have some familiarity with her. Did you recruit her or did you try to bring her here? Uh, we did recruit her. Mm -hmm. um, she she played for uh, the Missouri Phenom, which is the AAU organization that Kerala's father is, is part of. And Terry uh, was on the ground floor of building that, that club program. So, yes. How much familiarity then can there be when you know somebody that well and then you're going to end up playing against her? I mean, you're going to base it on what you see on film now, not, you know, not maybe what, uh, you know, a, a player did in high school. Uh, she's had a great career there, started a lot of games for him and is, is uh, an impact player. Is there also a last thing for me, a, a cautious message maybe that, that Georgia Tech played Louisville within two, beat UConn earlier this season, that, that they can do some damage? Yeah, right now you, more, you know more than I do. Um, so it's, uh, you know, they're, they're a good program and, um, playing a really good league. And, um, but I think we play in a good league and, uh, I think we've competed really well against some, some, uh, top 10 programs as well. Brandon, you said that was a special moment for your team. Just <clears throat> take us through it. What did you see from players, coaches? I'm just, <clears throat> you know, um, I think it's probably beneficial to have, uh, you know, that moment, um, you know, we're coming right out of a film session uh, in which we talked about Oklahoma and addressed some things that we weren't very pleased with. So um, it was important for us to, to be able to move on, you know, from that game and um, be really excited about the opportunities and celebrate the season as a whole. I, I don't think you can, um, you know, dwell on uh, maybe a poor performance Friday uh, morning. Um, we wanted to celebrate the, the entire season and, and uh, make the most out of, uh, again, the memory um, that was created for, for our players today. And you know, results aside, what do you hope your team and your players gain from this experience? Here? Um, from the NCAA experience, uh, just a desire to want to be there every year and to understand um, the margin for error, uh, how small it is. Uh, when, when you get into the tournament and um, everyone's very accomplished and, and deserves to, to be in the fight and um, that it comes down to a, a free throw box out here, a loose ball there, um, a tough finish at the rim and whether or not you move on or go home.